In the hi-fi, multi-channel stereo 70s, there are still a few individualists who appreciate an original vintage sound. But even the best old records have disadvantages, and so this man restores and improves their sound quality. The first thing to do is to transfer the sound to tape, uh, when, of course, every sound occupies a piece of tape. Now, if there's an unwanted piece of sound, then this can be cut, provided it's not too large, without the ear noticing the result. It's practically impossible to alter a sound when it's a fraction of an inch in a record groove. But if you transfer music and crackles onto tape, you can alter it much more easily. Once all the imperfections are recorded onto tape, the gramophone is laid aside. The usual technique of editing tape is to stop the recorder and mark the point to be cut with a wax pencil. The tape is then cut on a solid block of metal. But this homemade editing block has the playing head from a tape recorder mounted in the middle so that when tape is drawn slowly backwards and forwards under pressure, each sound is reproduced at a slow speed. Every crackle can be made to sound like a lengthy plop, and its duration can be marked easily. Now that the crackle is accurately located and measured, it's removed by special scissors with a blade that snips out just one twelfth of an inch. The sound that's gone lasted about one ninetieth of a second. When the tape is joined together again, the human ear will not usually discern that anything is missing. Even several hundred joins like this will only shorten a piece of music by a few seconds. The only time that a crackle must be left in is if it coincides precisely with the first moment of a note. If he cuts that, he loses the sound. Sometimes I'll work on a record for hours, sometimes days, sometimes months. But to bring a sound from the turn of the century to the standards of the 1970s, there comes a point at which a man physically editing the tape can do no more. Now the electronic control of sound frequencies takes over. With this instrument, I can selectively increase or decrease the effect of uh, various frequency bands uh, and so change the character of a, rec of a recording either advantageously or disadvantageously. Already the sound quality has improved enormously but sometimes a disc that looks perfectly preserved sounds quite atrocious. It could be that the original recording was made with the grooves cut at an unusual angle. The expert may simply recommend that for good sound reproduction, the needle should run along the side of the groove. And even if the worst happens and the acetate shrinks from the surface of this rare jazz record, it is still possible to recreate the sound. An incredible jigsaw puzzle may now take several months to complete. At the end, a glued and restored record will have even more violent crackles than usual. Then another marathon taping and editing session will start again. If a note is lost or scratched out, an identical one can usually be recorded from another section. And if that's impossible... I believe that if I don't do it, no one else is going to uh, do so either because they haven't the time and patience now or because tomorrow may be too late. <laughs> 